Alrighty, so today we're going to talk about the Philadelphia Union in the Moving Forward series episode, and there's no doubt that the Philadelphia Union probably had one of the most, most disappointing season that any MLS team ha has ever had this year. I mean, if I was going to do a ranking in terms of looking at uh, five of the most disappointing team in MLS this season, the Union would definitely be one of them, and probably right up there in terms of New England, of a team that has a lot of aspiration of making the playoffs as a bare minimum but eventually go on a deep run and not to mention you know trying to run back this current core that they had one last time and hope that this is finally the year that they can can uh get over the hump and win mls cup and they don't even make it to the play playoffs uh as a result of it now that being said they finished with the season with a 9 10 and 15 record and finished with 37 points Goal scoring was not a problem for this philadelphia union team in fact they scored 62 goals this season I think that is the most goal that any, any uh, teams that got eliminated uh, in recent in years in MLS because I, I have not seen a, a team that have scored that many goals and still aren't able to make it to the playoffs. The problem for them is obviously see their, their defense. And by the way, in terms of talking about how impressive their goal scoring is, 62 goals, that's only third uh, in the Eastern Conference in terms of the most goal that is being scored. Only Columbus and Inter Miami have scored more goals than the Philadelphia Union this season. The problem, obviously, for them is keeping the ball out of the back of the net. I mean, 55 goals conceded this season. By far the most that, that they have under Jim Kern in, in quite some time. And also, you know, uh, in terms of them missing out of the playoffs, this is the first time that they miss out on the playoffs since 2017. So they, they made it to the playoffs five straight season. And this is really the first big hiccup that they had. And they also finished with a goal differential of plus seven. And again, you know, for a team that, that finished that low in the standing, it is hard to believe a team that has that good of a goal differential uh, and you then they still uh, miss out on the playoffs and not, not coming close. Well, I wouldn't say not coming close to it because the Eastern Conference throughout the season, it's been kind of a jumble mess. And unfortunately, you know, from what happened when we saw in decision, uh, day eventually they kind of got the short end of the stick and finished 12th in the east now looking at the last five season um you know their last five season unsurprisingly has been pretty incredible this is when when we they were really kind of the cream of the eastern conference and the, the core that they ha have have really built up to a part where they they were the most consistent team in the eastern conference always find themselves in the top four Last year, they finished with a four position with a 15, 10, and 9 record and finished with 55 points. But as much as they have been very consistent in the regular season, this team will definitely be remembered in terms of the core and core that just cannot get over the hump. They got eliminated in the second round of the playoffs last year. It was against uh, FC Cincinnati. In fact, Cincinnati actually got revenge over uh, the Philadelphia U Union because the Union knocked them out of the playoffs in 2022. And Cincinnati kind of uh, decided to have some revenge in, in terms of the, of their the the playoffs that year and and eliminated the union in, in the process but that being said in 2022 this is by far uh the the furthest that this current core has and by far the closest that that this team has come to win an mls cup and probably the most heartbreaking way for a team to lose an mls cup like uh, i mentioned how in 2022 that mls cup is going to go down as probably the best mls cup we have ever seen in the league history and it's Unfortunate that the Union will be on on the wrong end of of, of that, and especially the way that they they lost in that that game. I mean, some will say that that's a very Union way to 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 choke in the final, or maybe a, a very Philly, Philly way to to choke in in the the final. As Philly sports team has not had really had a good good luck in the last couple of year falling short on uh, the final hurdle. But yeah, what a brutal way for them to to lose that final against. LAFC in the PK shootout and literally were just uh, minutes away from, from winning that that game and even taking a lead late in that 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 game heading into stoppage time only for for Gareth Bale uh, moment happened and them losing the MOS Cup but despite that you know they did finish first place with 19-10 and five record and finish with 67 points and the team that they of course lost won the supporter shield that year now in 2021 they finished with a second in place uh, position with a 14 12 and a record finished with 54 points they lost in the eastern conference final to the eventual mls cup winner nycfc and then in 2020 they of course won the supporter shield with a 14 5 and 4 record and finished with 47 points but unfortunately just like inter miami uh this year they lost in the the fir first round of the playoffs against uh new england uh at, at home and i would say that at least you know 
uh, Philly's got to thank Inter Miami in ter- terms of uh, what maybe is the biggest choke job we have ever seen a supporter shield team ha- has done in the the playoffs because you know that that uh, COVID shortened season them losing against New England despite the fact that they were perfect coming into that game at home they have not lost a single game or draw a single game during that COVID shortened season at at Super Park and how yeah that's kind of a bit of an embarrassing thing to to get have. Uh, have them uh, kind of choked away and have probably the worst performance that they ha- had that season in the first round of the playoffs. And again, they must have been Inter Miami because if it wasn't for 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 Inter Miami just absolutely collapsing like what we saw a couple of days ago, they probably might have one of the biggest choke job we have a, see, ever seen from a supporter shield winning team. Then in 2019, they finished in third place with a 16, 7, and 11 record and finished with 55 points. But unfortunately, they were eliminated in the second round. I think it was Atlanta United that they. They lost in the second round of the playoffs that year. Now, when you look at the top goal scored for this team, so when you have a team that scores 62 goal, you know that there's there's going to be guys that has pretty good numbers, and that's kind of the case. And we know for a while this uh, Union team has the 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 the, the big three headed monster and the, the this front three is perhaps one of the most lethal front three in the league. Though this year it kind of took a little bit of of a change in terms of how this front three. Folks, I mean, in the beginning, it was all about Gastek, Uru, and Carranza. But once Carranza got sold, uh, it turns out to be Gastek, Uru, and Baribo with the, the front three, uh, three-headed three monster for this uh, attack. Uh, you got Daniel Gastek with 17 goals, Mikel Uru with 10 goals, Ty Baribo with 9 goals. But that also does not include the 7 goals that he st- scored uh, in the, the Leeds Cup, Cup as well. But besides that, you got uh, Julian Carranza with... Six goals. Obviously, he's no longer with this team after he was sold to Feyenoord in the summer transfer window. And then you also have Quinn Sullivan uh, ends up in the top five list as well with five goals for this union side. Top assist leader, unsurprisingly, it's Kai Wagner with 13 uh, assists. Probably the the one of the best uh, fullback creative player we've ever seen in league history. By far the best uh, crosser uh, in this league for the past couple of years. And you also have Quinn Sullivan uh, with 11 uh, assists as well, followed by Jack McLean with seven assists, Mikel Uru with six assists, and Ali Badoyev uh, with four assists to round up the top five assist leader for this Union side. Now, the best win uh, of the season for them, you know, the Union didn't have a lot of games where I would say they, they had an incredible bowl win, but I would say that the 5-1 beatdown that they had against NYCFC, and this was at Yankee Stadium too, you usually do not see this happen often where NYCFC just completely getting blown uh, apart by opposition, consider uh, the fact that, you know, it, it's always not only tough to, to play against NYCFC on the road, but the small dimension, you don't usually see a team just completely walk into to, to that stadium and just, just put, put up a, a big goal spot and just completely demolish them like the Union did. But that was the game where, you know, we kind of saw a little bit of, of the old Philly Union. I mean, this year we definitely saw a couple of games where they look like the old Philly Union, a, a team that, you know, for the past couple of years, this is a team that is not afraid in terms of goal scoring. I mean, the goal scoring department has been just absolutely crazy for this Union team, especially the last two years where they, they score a couple of goals. You know there's going to be four, five, or six that's going to come, come through, and that's exactly what happened. They won 5-1 in that one against NYCFC and really kind of had that belief that it looks like they, they have a big chance of making the playoffs. But obviously the worst loss of the season. I mean, I could go with the decision day law loss uh, against Cincinnati that you know pretty much ended the the season. But I'm gonna actually go with two. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Usually I only pick one as the worst loss of the season. But I'm gonna pick two mainly because one happened in the league and one happened in the Concacaf cha- Champions Cup. Uh, the one happened in the league is that four free loss against the Chicago Fire. I mean that was just an absolute choke job to. Uh, to to it, it it's uh to to its infinity in terms of how the union somehow lost that one like they had a three one lead they had the lead heading late into the game they had had uh the fire pretty much all but but dead and Barry and yet they just absolutely self in self uh hit the self destruct button late in the game and that that just kind of sums up in terms of the bad run of form that this union team uh w- was in in that game. I mean, it's one thing to, to, to lose to the Chicago Fire, but to lose it like like that way, I mean, that was a brutal, brutal uh, loss that they suffer. And similar to the the one that got themselves eliminated in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, I mean, this is going to go down as one of the 
the worst beatdown we have seen a, an MLS team suffer against a Liga MX team in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And I know, yes, this happened in, in Mexico, but still, I mean, 6 nothing against Pachuca? I mean, I know Pachuca eventually would win the, the CONCACAF Champions Cup, champions cup but still i mean this was just this was absolutely hor horrendous and after helling them nil nil uh in the first leg even though you know that doesn't seem like it was a great resort because we knew that the union had all all to do uh in the the away leg um against pachuca but just to kind of lie down and die like like that it, it, it's just it, it was at it was almost kind of like like a bit of a a wake-up call all the fact that maybe, maybe um they're they're not as good good as what we fought, and especially the defense too. I mean that was a huge alarm bells. That man, that defense that was supposed to be one of the best for recent years just simply absolutely died. Like what we saw in that game against Pachuca. Now in terms of average attendance, eighteen thousand eight hundred and forty five, good for twenty fourth in the the league. You know the union still say that they sold out most of the game. I have noticed more empty seats this this season and that makes sense because you know i think philly is kind of one of those sports town that when you're good they're gonna show up when they're not good they're not gonna show up and we we saw it uh during the dark days of, of the union uh before this current core that has has really really uh turned the fortune of this team and really this is kind of the best run run of, of uh of um form that this team has gone in the last couple of years compared to their the, uh uh doing their their young young MLS franchise time in this league. I mean, people forget that this team uh, only was found founded uh, back in, in, I think it was 2010. That was the year that, that they first started to come in MLS. But yeah, there there's no no doubt that, you know, the attendance during those dark days was pretty poor. Um, the, the attendance still were, were pretty good throughout the season, but you definitely started to see a bit of a drop off. And there's no doubt that if this team continued to do, be bad, yeah, those those bad numbers and bad attendance that we saw during the dark dark days of this Union team were, was involved near the bottom of the Eastern Conference, that could return uh, um, if, if this team started to suffer a major drop-off uh, next season as well. Now, in terms of MVP of this team, obviously I could have gone with either of the front front three, but I'm going to obviously go with the main man, Daniel Gastak, another great great season and i know in previous year people have mentioned the fact that yeah you know he kind of pat stats his his goal tally because he takes a lot of penalty and you know there are some goals that he scored this season was from the penalty spot but you know he he has proven uh this season and really kind of last season as well that he's not just going to be a penalty kick merchant he's a guy that can can get into some good good space to score goals and there's even talk the fact that would they maybe even move him up up in that number nine position i mean he's more of a a number 10 even though he kind of isn't he's not kind of like a play maker at number 10 that you usually usually see uh uh have a number 10 role but yeah that could be interesting to see whether or not if they maybe push him into that that ninth spot as well this season uh disappointment obviously the center back partnership of jacob glesnes and jack elliott i mean i can't really pick pick uh between which one is more disappointing both of these guys just completely fall off the cliff it's especially jacob lesnar's too this was a guy that was the defender of the year just a couple of years ago i mean he is having having a drop off that is something that we have not seen uh since and probably uh well i would say it's a drop off we have not seen probably similar to what we saw with the drop off between trey uc and hani mukta those two guys i mentioned a couple of years were were in the running for MVP. One of them, of course, won, and both of those guys kind of just completely dis disappear as this season goes. That goes the same for Jacob Lesnar too. I mean, it is incredible of how bad he he was alongside with Jack Elliott. I mean, these two guys were kind of at the center uh, of this of this team in terms of so producing some great defensive uh, record year and year out. And yet this year, I don't know what happened. I mean, this the this back line and the, this two two center back part or that seems to be very strong in the past couple of years just simply decided to not only not show up but concede goals that you usually do not see them can concede uh in previous season now in terms of young player to watch this is a very tough one i, I mean anytime when i talk about the the philadelphia union and talk about which young players to watch there's a lot because you know we know that the union the, the philosophy of this team is not only have some good high-end talent and, and sign some good player for cheap but also produce some some good good uh players out of the academy and sell them off for a lot of money and we've seen it, it before where there's a lot of uh, these these uh, union players that come out of the academy eventually sold off for a huge amount 
uh, money and this season we continue to see the youth movement at, at its best i mean i could have easily gone with one of the sullivan uh brothers i could have even gone with nathan hario who really won that right back spot uh this this season i could have even, even gone with jack mcglynn another good season uh for him as well and i could have even gone with uh their their backup goalkeeper andrew rick a guy that you know kind of came out of no nowhere uh playing for their mls next pro team uh, was thrust into the starting role for the injured on Trey Blake, and there's times where he really stood on his ground. And for a guy that is only 18 year, years old, for that young of goalkeeper to to have those kind of good performance, he's going to be a guy that I think is going to be ne the next hair hair of Andre Blake. And if Andre Blake eventually does decide to hang up his boots, there's no doubt that Andrew Rake is ready to to fill in that spot. And there there probably won't be that much of a drop drop off uh, once. Uh, that the, does happen. But in the end, I'm going to definitely go with one of the Sullivan brother. I'm going to go with Quinn Sullivan. I mean, I know some people will say Kevin Sullivan is, is the one to cho choose because his brother has pr produced some incredible moments during his time in MLS Next Pro. And for the age that he, he is, he has not only material uh, to be, be a great, great, great uh, prospect in MLS, but maybe national team prospect as well. I mean, he's already ready, uh, playing for the youth national team has really looked uh, apart, but I'm gonna go with his older brother for for now because his older brother really just put up an incredible season. I mean, five goals and eleven assists. There's even talk the fact that he could be the 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 replacement for Alejandro Bedoya, and I think he he definitely is with the the way that he played very similar to what Ali Bedoya does, uh, being a defense defensive force in that midfield, but also offering some some attacking threat and the end product. Uh, there and he's also another guy that I would not be surprised he might be sold off for a huge amount of money and I also won't be surprised he could be on the national team uh, target relatively soon as well so what went right for this union team obviously the attack still lethal thanks to the free-handed monster of Gastek Uru and then later on with Ty Baribo although I will say that Ty Baribo he did kind of cooled off in near the end of the season and let's just hope maybe that's not kind of the beginning of the fact like that maybe that good run of form that he has seems like it may be a bit of a mirage uh the youth and homegrown look stronger than ever as i mentioned with all those homegrown that i mentioned they really took a, a big step another great example of why uh between the union and and fc dallas probably have the best youth academy and produce some of the best youth ta talent from their academy uh out of any mls team and then the unexpected goal goal scoring uh surge of ty Baribo. again you know a guy that just kind of came out of nowhere no but he thought that he would be the perfect replacement for, for Julian Carranza, and he really did that. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, the, the last last couple of games, really doing the, the stretch run, he, he basically went ice cold, and that maybe is a little bit of a concern, though, you know, maybe that's just kind of an example of a striker kind of hitting a, a rough patch, as we what we see, uh, even with the best uh, number nines in, in the, the world do. But they're hoping that next year, uh, when he, he does return to that role, he's going to continue to have that goal-scoring surge that he had, uh, had coming out and really, really, really started to break out uh, starting in the Leeds Cup and pretty much will have that throughout the entire season as well. So what went wrong for this team? Uh, the defense. I mean, it was absolutely a, a, a atrocious. It was it was a big liability to, to this team, especially in the early part of the season. The embarrassing exit in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. I mean, losing 6 nothing to you get to exit out the CONCACAF Champions Cup. Probably one of the more embarrassing uh, moments we've seen an MLS team uh, getting eliminated in, in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. And then, of course, missing the playoffs of what's supposed to be an all-in push uh, for this current core. I mean, that that's just absolutely inexcusable. And that kind of leads to, in terms of the moving moving forward, and before we talk about how it's hard to believe that, that we are actually talking about them looking for a, a new head coach after they decided to fire... Jim Curran just a couple of days ago. The big question now for this team is, are they going to go for a teardown and a retool? And throughout the season, I have already mentioned many times how I think this team needs to go through a teardown, maybe get rid of some of their, their core players and, and maybe start to go through through a bit of a rebuild. And they kind of do did that a little bit. You know, uh, they decided to so sell off one of the, their best defensive midfielder and probably the uh one of the best defensive midfielder of all time in MLS and Jose Martinez in the middle of the season they also sold Julian Carranza for, for a big sum of money to find or but is there going to be more more pieces that's going to go especially in the the youth department or they're going to go for a bit of a retool as well because you know when you look at this team they still have some good good pieces that I think 
could potentially get themselves bounced back to be a, a playoff team. Though, again, you know, I think the, the big part of the retool and the big part of them them signing some, some players and getting some reinforcement has to be on the defensive end. Because as much as I know, no, you you might think that, you know, maybe both those center back in, in terms of Jacob Glasnes and Jack Elliott, they just kind of had, had, had an, an outlier kind of poor season. I mean, you could kind of bet that that might be the case, but, you know, what did they, they once again regress heading into this season as well and you you don't didn't do anything to fix that. That's a big decision that I think the, the GM, Ernest Tanner, is going to have to make. The fact that is he going to keep with this current center back core thinking – that last year was just a complete out, outlier and think that both of those guys are going to bounce back or the fact that you, you legitimately need some some help in terms of that part because Andre Blake is not getting any any younger. I mean, I think this is this season probably one of the worst seasons that he has, but part of that is because he, he, he's he been been injured. And, you know, as I mentioned with the, the young prospect goalkeeper of, of Andrew Rake, he did pretty well at time, but you know, there's been times where he also have been hung out to dry because that defense for, for the union just at times completely not non-existent. So that is going to be a big priority that they're going to have to do. But when you look at this team, I mean, it, it can be a playoff team, but is it a team that can, can, can win, win MLS cup? And I don't think so. I mean, it's pretty clear that, that I don't think this team has enough, uh, even with the current remaining core that they, they had, Unless if they decided to to go through through a bit of a tear down or simply just really uh, go all in again, maybe sign some some big big players, make some big trades throughout this uh, winter transfer window. Once again, keep this um, uh, MLS Cup window open for a little bit longer. But going back to in terms of the head coaching change again, it was very controversial to decide to to fire Tim Kern. A lot of Union fa- fans did not like this this decision and I can understand why because I don't think Jim Kern is the problem uh, of this team yes this is his worst season uh, as a union head coach probably going back to 2016 that is but you know part of that is kind of kind of out of his control in 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 a way that you know again again the the ownership I think that's been kind of the one thing that a lot of union fans have pointed out that the ownership group as good as this team has it doesn't doesn't really ignore the fact that the this is one of the cheaper ownership group in the league and that a part of the reason why the union has been so good is because they've been very smart in ter- terms of making this signing and also their 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 academy is always producing some good talent but you can only do so so mu- much uh, of that until you don't decide to to make some some changes just to improve the team and that's kind of one of the, the big problem with this ownership group they, they tends to be very stagnated instead of improving and in the age of mls right now you got to keep improving or else uh you're gonna fall behind like what we see with the union this season where while they stay stay stagnant stay padded thinking that that's enough to make get hit to mls cup again other teams have already pa- passed them and already have much stronger player that have really overtook took them in terms of being the queen of the the crop in the eastern conference and then lastly, again, you know, looking at these young guys, there's no doubt one of them is going to be sold off. Who exactly is going to be that player? Now, we know that Kevin Sullivan is one of those, that player. He is going to be setting to join Man City once he's turned uh, 18. But there's no doubt that his brother is on, on a lot of the uh, the, the European uh, uh, scouting eyes uh, lately with the performance that he, he put up. Um, again, there, there's going to be, be a, 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 a young young homegrown from this union team that's going to be sold off for a huge amount of money. That's kind of what they, they've been doing for the past couple uh, of years. And and we'll see who, of course, is going to be next and whether or not if they will reinvest in that. I mean, I'm assuming they will definitely reinvest in, in the academy as they have done many times before. But this also goes back to what a lot of union fans are very frustrated with this ownership group, which is, you know, they sell off big, big amount of money for these young players, but they don't reinvest uh as as well as you think that they should should be but there you have it that is pretty much it looking at the union in this movie for series episode as always let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and if you're a union fan what do you think went right went wrong and most importantly moving forward how is this team going to look heading into next season but until then hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time